Okay, in this lecture we are going to be taking a look at relational database management systems. Now we did touch upon uh, database management systems in a previous lecture, so let's uh, go ahead and review that real quick. And what a database management system is going to do, it's going to do data definition to find the data being tracked, data manipulation, add update or removal of data from the system, data retrieval, getting the data out of the system, and administration of the system. And this is all specifically for a relational database that adheres to the relational model that we've been discussing. So let's take a look at these properties a little bit closer in this lecture. Okay, DDL, data definition language. So we've already seen some examples of creating tables. These are data structures that we're going to be using in the database. Underneath the covers, the database management system or the relational database management system is going to do, it's going to store data about your tables and catalog tables. So these are basically, uh, some people call it metadata. So metadata is data about data. So this is what's going to define the structure of the data that you're start storing in the database. It's going to create rules and things like you can't store text or commonly called a string inside of a number field. So if you call it a number, you're not going to be able to put the word Fred inside that number field. The database is not going to allow it. It will get, uh, throw an error. You can say that a field requires a value. So you must provide a value or it'll throw an error. So and there's a number of different constraints that we can set up. We've looked at some of them already. We'll be getting more into those throughout the course. But this sets up the rules of how the database is going to store data. And the database management system is going to enforce that rules. So when you have an external client that tries to scribble outside the lines, the system is going to say, no, you can't do that. Now, data manipulation. So we've seen some examples of this as well. So DML statements. We've been seeing insert statements specifically. So when we go through and manipulate the data, the relational database management system is going to make sure that what you're doing is going to adhere to the rules. So if you try to scribble outside the lines with an update, if you try to change something, if you try to delete something that needs to be there, it's going to throw an error. So it's going to require you to adhere to the definition. And when you're first learning, a very important thing that you need to think about is a data management system, you're going to be sitting at your computer just working with it alone, and that's fine. But often you have hundreds, if not thousands, of people on the system, and they're all doing reads. They're all updating data. So this, a lot of what's happening under the covers is functionality to handle competing conditions. So let's say two people go to update the data at the same time. What happens? And we're going to look at this further in depth inside the course and, and explore what happens there. What happens if something goes wrong? So my last bullet point there is enforcing data integrity. So if there's a system error, if you've done something outside of the rules, these are all rule sets of what happens when things go wrong. So that's an, another function of what the database management system is going to be doing. And it actually is very, very complex. And we will be looking at this much more in depth coming up in the course. But just want to give you an idea of data manipulation is more than just insert, update, and deletes. It in involves a very active system with many, many users and what can happen with those interactions between those users. So definitely a, a different paradigm shift that you need to go through and think about and realize that the database is going to be up and running and many people are going to be working on that database at the same time. Data retrieval. So you might think this is a very simple operation where you just want to get data out of the system. Well, it actually is not because the relational database managed system is going to determine an optimal way to retrieve data out of the database. So when you start getting these multiple table joins, that join condition can be very complex. Now, I've worked on systems that literally had many billions of rows in single tables. And now you want to join out those tables from one table to another table that also has billions of rows. And if you do that join incorrectly, your report can go from seconds to hours or possibly never even finishing. I've literally seen things go come off the of tracks and had a report that ran in a few seconds one day. Something changed in the system. That same report literally ran over the weekend. So it, so it things can go very, very bad. And there's a lot of factors that go into that, and we will be exploring those factors coming up in the course. But what you need to do is realize 
the scope and the complexity of the joints. That's one of the tasks in, under data retrieval. Also, being you can't think of the data as being static. If you start a query and somebody updates the, the data, what happens then? So that's another important question. And the relational database management system is going to set up a role structure of, that you can understand what's going to happen. And it's designed for data integrity of your reports. And it, that's something that we will also be covering in depth coming up in the course. And then finally, we have administration. So obviously, we're going to get user accounts on the system. And these user accounts are going to have security roles. And these roles are going to control what that user can see. So typically, your system is going to have a, a very powerful account that can do everything. But you might want to give Fred down on accounting the ability to see a payroll table but not the HR table for people's employment applications. So you could create a role for Fred where you can see one table but not the other. So the, the relational database management system, that, that's going to enforce those security roles of who can see what, who can update what, who can delete what. So these are a lot of complex things that we can do as far as how people access the system. Then under administration, we also have tools to see performance metrics. So we can identify costly operations and see how things are running and identify things that need to be looked at and tuned. So there's actually a whole tuning aspect to administering relational databases, and we'll be covering that future in the course as well. And then also under system administration, we have defining users. We talked about that a little bit. And then where the database stores its data on the computer system. So many of you might be coming back where you, from a background where you're working on a laptop and that laptop has a hard drive on it. These databases like Oracle, I've been on Oracle systems that had literally arrays of drives and hundreds of CPUs. So these massive database servers that cost millions of dollars, like obnoxiously amount of money for these systems, but they're very highly scalable systems and they have nothing, nothing to do like a common laptop. So these have many disks and you can use system administration to say how you want to store your data on this bank array of disk and how you want the system to lay it out. And you do this as part of the art of tuning. And then also system administration is going to get into backups and auditing. So backups are going to be backing up the database and you want a good backup. Think about a running system with things happening and going on and you need a backup, a point in time backup so you can restore that back point in time you don't always get a quiet spot on the database to do that. And then auditing, you want to be able to see who's changing what and keeping the audit record. So if something goes wrong from an application standpoint and you need to research something, you have an audit trail to go back and uh, look at. Now, one thing I want to get into is taking a look at the market share leaders. So there's a lot of different relational database management systems out there. I want to talk about who's out there, who's trending, uh, who's not doing so well. So let's take a quick look. And this is from April of 2018, and this is from dbengines.com. I pulled up their current rankings, and I'm just looking at relational databases here, some of the very popular ones out there. And you can see the, the blue line there. That's uh, SQL Lite. That is a, a database that's often embedded in, like, web browsers and your mobile phones. So that's not a very big player uh, there. But you can see right at the top, Oracle's, like, kind of right on the top there, MySQL, and that's MySQL installation. So you can see that Oracle and MySQL, I've seen other charts where they, they have almost 50% of the market together. Kind of makes sense from this. Microsoft SQL Server is up there. And then you can also see the orangish line there in Postgres SQL. That's the fourth one down. You can see that that is trending up. And then one thing I found very interesting from looking at this is down on the bottom, you can see in 2013, almost nothing. And that, that triangle line, the orangish triangle line now at the bottom, that is MariaDB. So if you look at MariaDB and MySQL, you can see that they really have a, a huge uh, percentage of market share. So by far, if you combine those two, MySQL compliant databases really do gobble up quite a bit of the market. And that leaves Oracle in a, a distant second to that technology. So I, I found that was interesting. And then we have uh, DB2 there uh, trending along, kind of a flat line, so they, they've got a, a certain amount of the market share. 
So I found some interesting trends. I, I was really surprised. I was expecting to see Oracle losing more market share than they have, but they actually have not. So I found that interesting when I brought this up. Now let's take a look at uh, what happens when we mix in the NoSQL databases. So if you look at the headlines about the IT industry, NoSQL does get a lot of press, but is it living up to the hype? Some people say that NoSQL is going to kill relational databases. Now let's take a look and see what's really happening. So mix in some of the popular NoSQL databases. We can see that like MongoDB is probably by far the most popular one. And then Redis is also up there. Redis and Cassandra, they're also very popular. But they address a specific need in the marketplace. And they are getting popularity. But are they a killer, the end of relational databases? I really don't think so. So some people, I, I think they're a little premature in calling for the demise of relational databases. I think they're going to be around for some time to come because they simply are very good at what they do. So I thought you'd find these little bit of information about industry trends interesting here. And again, this was recorded in April of 2018. You can see down there at the bottom of the screen, this is from dbengines.com. After this, if you ever want to go there, you can get a lot of metrics on the industry and see where things are at just by going to dbengines.com.